Hey everybody and welcome back to another Blender tutorial where as you can see today we're making some ducky 3D fanfic. I'm trying to steal his audience, okay? Um, but no, uh, what, what happened is the other day somebody sent me a Patreon message. This dude is a sculptor, so unlike us who just make dumb 3D models on the computer, we can just click things and it's done. This guy actually makes sculptures and he basically asked me uh, to make not a Mobius strip, but like a trifold, like a triangular uh, Mobius strip. So. I looked into it, this is what I came up with, but we're not done uh, with just this because this is a, a geometry node setup. Uh, so I made any Mobius strip you want. What about the four fold, the five fold? What about ones with extra twists? So uh, what you are gonna get out of this tutorial is uh, a geometric geometry nodes procedural way of thinking to make any kind of Mobius strip. And yes, we're also going to be making a nice little design that Ducky 3D would be happy to see. It's abstract, it's motion graphics, but uh, the important thing is the geometry nodes and how to make the Mobius strip. So let's get into it. Um, again, this is the uh, finished scene with particles and all this. Let's get rid of it. Let's make this from scratch. So uh, for this tutorial, I'm using 3.1 alpha. I heard 3.2 came out or 3.1s in beta or something uh long story short <clears throat> use the most uh, recent version you have because the newer it is the more nodes there are and i don't know if i'm using any special nodes i think there is one that was added recently merge by distance that we'll be using but get a new version of blender and then follow along okay uh, mobius strip how do we make it geometry nodes apply it again uh, we have a cube the cube has a geometry nodes modifier that modifier is described by this node group and because i deleted the uh, input it's as if it's gone by the way i'm still sick so if i sound like a dying cat <clears throat> i am i'm a dying cat send help please um we need to make a mobius strip what is a mobius strip it's basically this like band that you have go around a path uh, but then we give it a twist and that's what gives it its weird non-orientable nature long story short we need to make a path to make the path since we're trying to make a trifold we want a triangular path so what i'm gonna do is a, a bit of a weird move uh, critics have called me crazy for this but i'm gonna add a curved circle which is weird because i want the triangle not a circle well Remember, curved circle is procedural. We pick the number of points. So if you take the number of points and bring it down, it's a triangle. Bring it up, it's a square. And this is how I um, made a Mobius strip of any number of folds by just changing this number. So first of all, we want a triangle. Second of all, I don't want the corners to be that sharp. So let's curve it or curve it's a dumb word maybe bevel it um in the language of nodes right now we call that a fillet curve because we still don't have a bevel node as far as i know what fillet curve does is it kind of fillets the curve it softens the corners you could add a bunch of these um as somebody told me setting this to poly is a smarter move because then we can just do it from here so i did a tutorial where i did a bunch of nodes sorry um but just bump up the count here so we have a nice smooth corner and again we can control wow that's bizarre might want to look into that uh, but we can control the roundness of this so again this is just the path that we want to be using to sweep this like strip around it and then give it a half twist um, so next order of business is okay we have a path let's sweep a band around it super simple so we're just taking this logically uh, to do that, we need to kind of turn it into a mesh, sweep one curve along another. As you know, hopefully, uh, we call that, I already forget the name, it's called curve to mesh. Because in my head, I call it profile curve. But we need to take the curve, turn it into a mesh, using what profile curve, what is it we're sweeping along? Uh, well, I want I guess you have a couple options, but since I want mine to be this nice band, I'm thinking, let's just use like a square, so like a quadrilateral. And by the way, I am digging the feature where you can just like uh, drag and then type it in, but whatever. Uh, I want a nice quadrilateral, which looks, doesn't look good. <laughs> uh, let's fix it. Take the size, bring it down, and you can see, uh, now we're getting something a bit more workable. It still looks weird, and that's because of the set shade smooth. Uh, we can fix that by saying set shade smooth, disable. So now it's not going to try to smooth out our thing, and it's nice and uh, flat. So... Again, uh, we've made this custom curve. I can make it a square, a pentagon, whatever. And then we sweep this quadrilateral, this uh, square curve, along it, okay? Meaning I can control the thinness of it. I want it to be pretty thin and pretty tall. Um, and second of all, before we actually turn this into a Mobius strip, uh, one thing I just considered now, in my original, I wanted to like soften these edges. And what I did uh, to do that originally is I used a bevel modifier, 
uh, with a couple of divisions, and you can see like smooths out the lip of this. But I just had a thought, and my thought is that was a pretty dumb way to do it. Why didn't I just fillet the quadrilateral? I feel like that makes more sense anyways. Let's try that. We, we got to make sure it's a very small limit radius so that you can see what we're doing. We're turning it into a capsule. I don't know why I didn't do that. That makes a lot more sense. Okay, so we've taken a basically a quad, but a filleted quad. So I smoothed it out, maybe limit radius just in case. And we sweeped it along the custom path that I made uh, to make this. And again, procedural, you can choose the size of this, um, which maybe you want the radius to be a function of that, but choose the size of it, choose the shape, whatever. Uh, but it's not a Mobius strip, right? This is just kind of like a fancy cylinder. Uh, to make it a Mobius strip, we somehow need to twist this now. And it's kind of weird because the way you make this in real life is you take a strip of paper, you twist it, so now it's like half turned, and then you connect the edges, right? Um, here, we're doing a different order of operations. I first move it around the, the curve, and then I want to twist it. And fuck if I know how that guy sculpted it out of rock. I don't know what workflow he used. Either way, we need to twist it. Um, luckily, curves have something. If you look at the um, data that composes up a curve, we have the position, the radius, but then the tilt. Remember, curves have tilt, and by changing the tilt, uh, we can make a Mobius strip. So how, how are we going to do this? Set curve tilt. Perfect. Uh, we want to modify the tilt in such a way that we're tilting, and you'll see what that means in a second. As you can see, when I tilt, it does this weird distortion, right? But it's almost like it's turning it inside out. If I tilt it along the path, it will almost look like a twist, and it, and it will be a twist. So, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, so we're going to tilt it, but not by the same number, um, by a number that depends on how far around the path we are. Um, specifically, if I want to know how far along this original curve I am, uh, there's a node for that, of course, and it's called, it used to be called curve parameter, but the guys at the Blunder headquarters got privy to that, privy to that, and they're like, let's call it spline parameter. I don't know why. Uh, what spline parameter does, if we look at this factor, is it outputs a number between zero and one, zero being the beginning of the curve, and then it goes around, it increases, it increases, and then it's one at the end point, okay? Take it, connect it. And you can see it's, it's, it looks fucked, and we'll fix it. But you can almost see it's like twisting as we go along. And specifically, uh, because this tilt is in degrees or radians when you plug it in, it's weird. Uh, to do a half rotation, we need to do pi radians. If you don't know why, don't worry about it. But long story short, a full rotation is 2 times pi for whatever reason. A half rotation is then half of that. It's just pi. So instead of going from 0 to 1, I want this to go from 0 to pi. And you can see it does kind of a half twist. I know, I know, it looks broken, um, and we'll fix it. But you can see it kind of does create the Mobius strip. So now the question is, why is it broken? Long story short, the Mobius strip is this like thing that shouldn't be possible in the real world. It's this thing that has one, it, it has two sides, but it's actually just one-sided. You, you know the Mobius strip is weird, right? It shouldn't be possible in 3D. The thing is, once you do this half twist and you get to this connection point, you have the beginning, which is normally oriented, and the end, which is rotated by half a rotation. So when you try to connect them, weird stuff happens. Like, it shouldn't be possible. Uh, so we need a workaround. And the workaround is we say, you know what? Don't actually connect them. Just make them really, really close to each other. The way I do that is... Um, well, also, and a second issue is we don't have that much geometry, except that uh, if I was to look at the geometry, that can, I guess I can't. If you were to imagine the vertices that make this up, there's like a bunch of vertices at this curve, and then as we go along this line, there's a gap. So we have two issues, long story short. Not enough geometry and this connection point. First of all, to solve the not enough geometry, I'm just going to add a resample curve. Boop. And you can see now it, it looks very faceted, but it's evenly distributed. Just bring that up. So that solves one of these problems. So you can see here's the before, not enough geometry, so it gets nice and flat. After, nice and smooth. And then the second issue is this uh, connection point. You see, to, to make it connect, it has to do this weird thing where the geometry like flips. and It shouldn't be possible, is the point. But as we increase this, you can see it gets closer and closer and closer and closer and closer. Uh, so one solution is you just make this number stupid big, and that might be fine. So you have this tiny gap or whatever. Um, a second solution, if you're curious, um, we actually don't want these to connect, so you just say set spline cyclic and you make sure that's disabled 
So now it's not actually even trying to connect those points, whereas it was before. So before, after. Um, and you can still bump up this number quite high. And I think at this point, is setting shade smooth wrong? I guess it is, because we get this weird facetting. So we'll just live without it. Um, so again, the uh, remedy to this is a cheat, right? We just make this a stupid big number. Stupid, stupid big. Um, although I have noticed that you start getting some uh, artifacting uh, because the points are too close together or something. And you can fix that by kind of limiting the radius. So long story short, what 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 has this rambled come to ramble come to? It's come to a Mobius strip where we can change the size of it. And again, it's a proper Mobius strip. It's one-sided in some sense. Uh, but we can make it a quad Mobius strip, a pentagon. We could actually bring up this number and then it becomes a normal Mobius strip, right? Um, additionally, we can control the curvature using this one. Look at that. That's bizarre. Uh, we can control the curvature of it um, until we get a nice round one. That's still a, a, a nice trifold. Um, and in general, we have this thing we can control, and it's a fully procedural Mobius strip. You can give it thickness, thinness, whatever. Okay? Um, but now that we have our fully procedural Mobius strips, again, that was the point of this tutorial. Uh, let's just quickly set up a scene, which is not the point of this tutorial, but it's easy. So I'm just going to rotate it. Um, I want this Mobius strip to be constantly turning somehow. And you can see, oh, another thing, by the way, multiply pi by two, double twist, multiplied by another two, quadrilateral twist. So that, that's another way we can control this and get some very cool results, by the way. But um. I want this to constantly be turning. A way to do that is I want to take this uh, tilt and just add something to it all the time. So it's always being offsetted, but uniformly. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this function. Again, we multiplied by pi to get that perfect half twist. Do you do anything that's not a multiple of pi? You can see these don't connect, really, right? Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a math addition. And you can see when we add, it does this weird inversion thing because it's adding uniformly, but the points stay connected. So long story short, take this and either use a driver, or now that we have uh, the time node, just take seconds, plug it in, plug it in and it's going to take the frame number in seconds and animate it. Okay, cool. Um, I'm just going to play with this a bit. I want it to be not as long in this sense, so it's a bit thinner in that way. Um, so I want that uh, basic composition, take a sphere, subdivide it, throw it in the middle, Again, this is the part of the tutorial where we're just, we're making it look good, but it's just going to be nonsense, right? So basic scene, I'm going to put this on a floor. This is the thing Ducky 3D specializes in. He makes these abstract scenes. I do not. I instead focus on this geometry notes part, but whatever. Um, I'm just, I just took a plane. I beveled it, did the thing, shade smooth. Boom. We have a scene. Easy enough. Uh, to make this thing compositionally correct, we need to make sure when we look through the camera, it's in the right spot. And that should be like over like here on the Y axis. Uh, so I'm going to take the camera, move it to the origin, move it back on the Y axis or forwards. I don't know. And rotate it up. So that seemed correct. Um, so again, what we have is this camera shifted on the Y axis, tilted by 90 degrees on the X. So it's facing. And let's... Uh, I guess keeping it far away is good, and we instead zoom in our camera to get that nice, almost orthographic look. Okay, basic scene. Beautiful. Let's light it. Get rid of the light. Instead of the light, use an HDRI. Uh, get one from HDRI Haven. They're free. Um, I think the one I used for the original is this one, maybe? It would be better with cycles. Yeah, that looks roughly correct. Okay. Um, so there, we have a basic scene. Um, to get, again, to get rid of the seam, if you do the spline cyclic, you can try to up the count here, um, which makes the gap smaller and smaller, smaller and smaller and smaller, although it does create this artifacting. I don't really know why. Um, so what I would recommend is you could just, like, not, I mean, I think it looks fine, really. I guess, okay. There is technically one way you can fix this. Maybe we should get into it. Uh, you could technically, now that we've done this uncyclicning, we could try to merge these vertices. Because I guess I did say there's the merge command. So let's try it. Not gonna 100% um, be down with this idea if it doesn't work, but whatever. We could try a merge by distance, which what it does is it takes our geometry, new node, again, make sure you have 3.1. And it looks at vertices that were, are within some distance, threshold of each other. And if they are, connect them. Make that threshold smaller. 
like really small, like 0.01, and we get something like this, which does seem to break our geometry a bit. That, that's the thing. That's why I did the uh, bevel node before. But if we set this to a smaller radius, I don't know. The point is, you could try to find the perfect number that merges them, and then you say, oh, where do you merge them? Only at the areas that matter. So, like, for example, a function you could use is, say, look at the index and say, where is it uh, less than some number? Okay? So, the way this works is the bigger I make this, uh, you can see as it sweeps around, so you can see this is now increasing and it's going around uh, this thing, it's going to merge as we go around the Mobius strip. So, again, I'm not going to do it for this, but just so you know, you could technically merge these. I'm just going to be lazy this time. Uh, where were we? Uh, we have the setup, we have the lighting. Uh, let's quickly make it look good. Um, so basic uh, material that we can apply to these. Uh, make it metallic and shiny, right? Uh, so in the shader editor, I'm going to call this metal. So we have a nice metal material. And again, we need to use geometry nodes to apply materials, you know. So we're going to set material at the very end of our chain. So our Mobius strip has this metal material, right? And we want to make sure that it looks um, metallic, that it looks maybe not too shiny, because then you can really see the facetting issues. Just a bit shiny. And to make it glow, I'm going to use a basic uh, Fresnel node, which gives us this nice kind of highlight, uh, depending on, and that's going to change as this thing's playing. Let me just speed through this. I'm going to take a color ramp, make it higher contrast, and you can see this Fresnel almost moves along the curve as we go. By the way, I don't know why I set this to experimental. So this can be used to say, where is our thing going to glow, right? So take the emission strength, plug it in there, and make the emission like a yellowish color. So basically I'm saying, have it be metal, but it's going to glow yellow, uh, depending on this Fresnel function. Although it doesn't seem to be very strong. So we can take it and multiply it to make it stronger by like three. And now it's a bit more visible. Yeah. So you can see we have this yellow glowing going around, and uh, similarly... Uh, for the sphere, I think we can just reuse the material. And the Fresnel on a sphere kind of looks like the rim of it. We can make that a bit more highlighted using our color ramp. There we go. Um, for the scene, like for the background plane, I'm just going to make a basic material uh, with high roughness so it's not really reflecting anything. And I'm going to make it a darker color and slightly yellow. Okay? Beautiful. Um... Last thing, or last one or two things, is we want to add particles to this. And again, it's just a Mobius strip tutorial. This part just doesn't matter. Uh, we want to add particles, and let's actually add a bit of texture to our Mobius strip, which is actually interesting because it's not obvious how to do that. Um, if you were to select the Mobius strip, uh, like I did here, and you try to, like, I don't know, generate a normal map from some uh, noise texture, so I'm just going to import in a basic noise texture. You can see what that looks like. Uh, you're going to notice, I think, um, as I play this animation, let's do this in look dev, uh, you can see the noise kind of flows with it, which is cool, um, but it's not sticking to the surface. Um, and this is because we don't really have a UV coordinate system for this. Um, so it's not obvious how we'd actually make a texture stick onto this. So let me show you how to make a custom coordinate system for this. Uh, what we can do is we can say, let's make an X and a Y coordinate that tell us exactly where we are on the Mobius strip. The X coordinate can say, how far along the main loop are we? In other words, how far along this loop are we, the triangle? And the second one can say, how far along the uh, sweeping, the, the smoothed out curve? It's under the sphere, I think, yeah. Um, we could add two coordinates for that. Uh, to do that, Super simple. We're going to capture an attribute because I want to capture this information and send it to the shader editor. Um, I'm going to capture this information. I think after the tilt is fine. Uh, take the spline parameter because, again, that's exactly what the spline parameter, parameter is. It tells us how far along the curve we are. And we can also capture uh, this for the other one, for the other curve. So now we have a X and a Y coordinate, which we can explicitly combine. Combine X, Y, and then send this information to the shader editor, yay. So it's now an output. If you go to the modifier, you can see, whoa, we can call this something. And long story short, you have to add an attribute node, call it the same thing, so I called it chords. And now you can see, if we actually preview this, you can see that I've now created or invoked 
That's the cool mathematician word I've invoked. Uh, you can see I've invoked a kind of like a UV wrap on this, a custom coordinate system that sticks with it through the deformation, right? So take this, apply it to the noise texture, and now you can see this noise texture, whatever it is, it sticks onto it, which is pretty cool. Uh, specifically for this one, though, I believe I used a wave texture and set it to Y so it flows with it. Yeah. So take that, send it through a bump node with the height socket so it turns it into a normal map, connect it, view it, wait for it to load. Perfect. So now we have bands on our Mobius strip, and we can make that. That's procedural as well, so you can have it be a high scale. Uh, you can add some distortion to it. Which, again, all of this is going to stick with the uh, coordinate system. And now this metal looks a bit more interesting, which ain't bad. Um, what else? Particles? Yes, particles. And let's also make this background a bit more saturated. Uh, to make particles, uh, you could do this in geometry nodes and give it the physics and all this. Uh, I just did the lazy approach. So I have my geometry nodes modifier. After that, I'm going to add a particle system modifier so it's literally going to generate a particle system after the geometry nodes and you can see it does this weird thing where it looks like it's peeing from the sphere uh, this is because in the particle system it doesn't really know that we turned our original cube into a mobius strip to fix that go to source and use modifier stack so it's going to look at the modifier stack in other words it's going to look at our geometry nodes and spawn particles from that surface normal right uh, this is cool because now what we can do is we can disable gravity, so they're just going to kind of be launched. Um, but they're not launched randomly. They're launched based off the twist and the normal of our Mobius strip. So we'll look good once we make it look good. Uh, to make it look good, we don't want it to be these giant spheres. I want it to be tinier spheres. So I'm going to add a sphere. And then we're going to say for each particle, render an object. Which object? The new sphere. So you can see now we have these spheres. But we can make them smaller on average and randomized. So not every sphere is the same size. Additionally, I don't want them to uh, shoot out that quickly. Like it looks like they're just launching. Um, so the surface normal velocity. So it's going to be launched out with some velocity in the direction of the normal. Take that and bring it down. So 40% is going to be nice and, you know, calm. We can also random. We can take the lifetime, shorten it, and maybe randomize it a bit. So now they don't live for that long. So they stay pretty close to the source. And uh, that's our particle system, right? Um, at this point, the only thing we need to do to it is, again, this sphere that we put off to the side is the particle that's being instanced, is we just need to make a basic material. And I'm thinking for this, I'm going to keep it super simple. I'm going to make it a yellow emission to go with our color theme. So you can see I'm going to make it stronger. Now we have these glowing orbs, and you can make it much stronger. That actually looks dope. I should have done that. Most of this lighting, by the way, is coming from this sphere over here. That's why it's happening. That looks great, actually. Uh, but whatever. You make them these uh, yellow glowing spheres. And the only other thing I would do is they kind of like cut out, right? Like when the particle disappears, it just does that. It disappears. Um, so we can have it fade off using a particle info node. This is a node I haven't used in a hot minute. Um, it gives us the particle info, right? It can, we can generate a random number for each particle, or we could just look at the age, right? Um, which tells us how old the particle is. You take this, you divide it by the lifetime. So you say, how old is the particle divided by how long is it going to live? And it's going to create this nice kind of gradient in some sense, where the particle spawns black, and then it turns more and more white. In fact, we want to take this and invert it. So it does the opposite. So we have a particle. It's white. So let's follow this particle. So it's kind of gray. And as it gets older and further away, you can see it's getting closer and closer to black. So you can kind of see that happen. These particles are white until they die off and then they're black. Meaning, if you take that and connect it to the alpha, how transparent it is, uh, these particles are going to glow. But as they get further and further away, let's follow this particle, this one right here. You can see it's getting more and more transparent until it disappears. Okay. Uh, rest of this is just some like basic compositing and shit, so I'm not going to go into it. Maybe, okay. I know I keep cramming things in. Maybe one last thing is I'll show you how to make a gradient over here. Uh, yes, you could literally just take a gradient node and pick two colors. Uh, but here's the fancy way of doing it. So the background's not just one color. Take texture coordinates, 
look at the windowed coordinates, which will give us X and Y coordinates depending on our camera view, right? So you can see as I move my camera, it kind of sticks onto it. It's weird, uh, but it's useful for what I'm about to do. Uh, did I just screw myself? I feel like undo should let you move the camera back. Okay, whatever. Let's reposition our camera. Boop. Um, oh, wait. That's the plane. Take the camera. Reposition it. There. 90 degrees. Not the end of the world. Okay. Uh, what this uh, thing lets us do, long story short, is we take the X uh, coordinate, and it gives us the same gradient as before, but now it starts exactly on the left. Whereas you could see... Uh, the gradient texture before because it's using generated corn it starts over here on the geometry uh, so this is a nice way to extract a gradient and you now pick two colors so one of them could be this kind of like yellowish brown the other one could be this kind of reddish right connect that to the base color view it and now we have a nice gradient going from left to right and again the rest of this is just compositing color correction you say take the gamma bring it down so it kind of looks more high contrasty you can play with the exposure and stuff. So I think at this point, I've given you all the pieces of the recipe, and we've gone for almost half an hour. All the pieces of the recipe to make the uh, final result, which for me, I just picked some glows and stuff like that. So either way, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. Again, the point of it was the Mobius strip. The rest of it was just extra. Um, and thank you to the person on uh, Patreon who... Uh, messaged me for that because that was just a free tutorial idea. Uh, speaking of Patreon, uh, let me tell you about Patreon and don't click away. Uh, this might actually benefit you and that's for real. Uh, Patreon, why would you want to join it? Why would you want to give money to me, right? You want you want to watch my tutorials for free? Uh, the reason is there are three benefits Patreon's patrons get. The first one is early access. You could have seen this tutorial early. I think I'm a bit ahead of schedule, so this one is probably uploaded a couple days early. Blend files. That's the big one in this case. Uh, you could have just downloaded the blend file and played with it. You didn't need to make it yourself. I mean, following along is great because you learn how to make it. But you get the blend file and any blend file I've uploaded over the last three years, which is hundreds, and also project files, you can download immediately once you join Patreon. So early access, blend files, and exclusive tutorials I try to make at least once a month. Or make one a month. And now that it is February, I got to make an exclusive tutorial. I got to figure that out. But usually, um, it's just a bonus tutorial going some, going in depth on something I just wanted to do that I didn't upload on uh, YouTube. Um, so those are benefits that exist. You click the link in the description. Uh, you get to become a patron, get those benefits. But also, you can support this channel and the CG Matter channel. So yes, if indeed you want to fund these two channels, this is actually the main way that I can do this. Um, and make the tutorials free. If I did not have Patreon, I would have to go get a different job, honestly. Um, so if you want to fund these, keep the uh, tutorials going. The guy who does it the best, maybe. Um, that's a way you can do it. Either way, thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned something. Mobius Strip Guy, you're welcome.